Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Tuesday the 12th of October 2021. Today we're mostly going to be talking about Millwall players playing for teams that aren't Millwall. And that will become apparent as it goes along, but we're going to start off with this. Now this is worrying. This is worrying. Um, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see what's happened here, but uh, this is from Paul Gilmore, a uh, Sky Sports um, person, reporter, commentator, I don't know what he is, but he was at the Bulgaria Northern Ireland game in Bulgaria, and he tweeted out, in position for Bulgaria versus Northern Ireland, Stuart Dallas on bench after picking up Nock versus Switzerland, George Saville, parentheses, knee, out, and Kieran Brown also has a knock. So George Saville did not play for Northern Ireland today because he has injured his knee. Now that is kind of worrying. We we do have Kifton Bell there, um, ready to come in. He's been sitting out the the last couple of games, which is incidentally coincided with our winning uh situation so um maybe there's a correlation there i don't know maybe he's he's too defensive we need our central midfielders to be a bit more attacking and let the defenders defend but George Savoy is out with a knee injury now we got four games until the loot, four days until the looting game. Um, will he be back for that? Then we've got a midweek game, so that's seven seven days away. Will he be back for that? We don't know. We just don't know. I imagine we might find out more details. Probably. I imagine he's back at the club on Thursday. So we probably might find out Thursday night, Friday, maybe. Um, when when uh, Garrett does his pre-match interviews for the Luton game. Um, so we might find out then, but it uh, does not look good. So, George Savile missed that game for Northern Ireland, but Danny Ballard played that game for Northern Ireland. And it was not a good result for Northern Ireland. It finished Bulgaria 2, Northern Ireland 1. It basically, they basically can't qualify now. They needed to win that game just to get into the playoffs, and then they had to win the playoffs to get into the um, um, to get through to the to the World Cup. So they won't be in the World Cup in Qatar, which uh, maybe has a good thing. Good thing uh, because that's gearing up to be an absolute omni shambles um of a tournament being played in like november or december or something it was supposed to be they said they could build air conditioned stadiums which was clearly absolute nonsense and they're not doing that so everything had to be moved until november and you've got all these players talking about political reasons and um making political stands but then you've got qatar which is uh, a bit dodgy on those woke issues that the players seem to uh, have a, having a stand or a knee about. And um, they're not saying anything about Qatar. They're not threatening to boycott Qatar. So, I don't know. Well, Northern Ireland won't be there. So, anyway, never mind about all that, all that nonsense. Let's see how Danny Ballard got on. So he did start, um, and this this is the rating for the Northern Ireland players by best to worst. So this is stats based, so bear that in mind. And you, we have to scroll all the way down to number 14 to get to Danny Ballard. And he got a score of 5.91. He was the second worst player for Northern Ireland, apparently. I didn't watch the game. I'm looking at the stats. He got a yellow card. Um, so. But only one player for Northern Ireland got above seven. So. And they did lose the game. 
they actually gave a bit more of a spirit performance looks like and based on touches than um than they did against Switzerland when it was an absolute steamroll they did they got steamrolled by Switzerland um the other day on on the weekend so here you can go touches so 58 Danny Ballard 58 touches for the Northern Ireland uh see if he did anything up front he was fouled three times and he got dispossessed once. Didn't really do anything up front, so he didn't go up for any corners or, or set pieces, okay. Defensively, what did he do? No tackles. Uh, one interception. Three clearances. No block shots and two fouls given away. Passing wise, 44 passes and 77.3% accuracy. Now that's pretty decent. Uh, he didn't cross, he didn't do any crosses. He had seven long balls, four of which were accurate. So, just an average average game for Danny Ballard. Um, in, a, in a pretty um, disappointing result for Northern Ireland. Um... Yeah, and so that was one Millwall, uh, Millwall player that played today but didn't play for Millwall. And now we're going to move on to a little mini midweek loan watch because there were players playing today. We start off with um, okay, I thought I had it pulled up, I'm gonna have to pull it up. Uh, live, well, I'm gonna to have to do it live. Um, Isaac Aloffy played for Sutton United, he started the game, and here we go. I thought I had it pulled up, so they went, they went to Fratton Park and they won 2 0 in the Papa John's Trophy Southern Group B. And not only that, so here's the lineup. So you got Marlon Romeo playing for um for Portsmouth. But here, so this is from sofascore.com because whoscored.com don't touch the Papa John's with a barge pole. You can see Heiser Golovi, seven point two. And he didn't play the whole game, he got subbed off after an hour. I think um, now if they gave him an hour they're they're trying to he ease him back into it, or they taking him off because they want him for the weekend. They is he coming back strong for the weekend? But seven point two, even only he only played sixty minutes. Let's let's click on this, and then let's click on this, and it should come up. No, it didn't. There you go. Aha. So what did he do in this game? So he played sixty one minutes. He got one goal. Yes, he scored a goal. Unfortunately, he's still waiting for his the first league goal in his career. He hasn't scored in the league yet. Not even, I believe, for St. Johnston. So, he scored in for Sutton in the conference, but that's not league football. So, he hasn't scored. That's an amateur. It's not amateur, it's semi-pro. But he hasn't scored in a professional league yet. Still waiting. Then This is... Better, it's closer. He scored against a professional team in a cup competition. For, what would this be? Um, this would be what we've got the FA Cup, you've got the League Cup, and there. So, this would be the third cup competition, a third tier cup competition. He scored, which is good. He scored against Portsmouth, and they had um, they did rest some players, but that's a League One team. So he scored against the League One team, away from home. That is good. It looks like he's back, which very, very um, good to see that he's back. It's really, really was a shame when he got injured up uh, pre-season training in, in Scotland. I really thought he would could push Bradshaw and Bod Varson and get in um, the Millwall squad and be that that player that's on the bench. Uh, if we need a bit of pace coming on, unfortunately, that's kind of been taken by Shea Yojo now. Um, but 
he's at Sutton United and he's scoring goals. So, so he only had one shot on target, one shot off target, one shot blocked. Okay, so not didn't have many shots. Scored one goal. 14 touches. He had four passes, four accurate. 100%. Brilliant. Crosses, one. Not accurate. One long ball. Yeah, accurate. Uh, he had ground jewels. Um, basically, uh, yeah. He had four of them, didn't win one. Aerial jewel, one, didn't win that. Possession lost, five. Okay, that's not too good. Uh, foul, well, he's up front. So is, if he's going to be trying to dribble, trying to make things happen, that's going to happen. Is he going to be losing the ball because you're going to be trying. No, Jed does. Jed loses the ball all the time. What are you going to. But he's still our best player. He's trying to make things happen. Fouls, two. Didn't get fouled once. Uh, defensively, did one block shot. Okay. So that is good. So there you go. Isaac Olofi back for Sutton United. Back scoring goals. Let's see if we see him in the league. Um, he's come off the bench the other day at the weekend and helped set up a goal. So, hopefully, he'll be back in the league scoring goals. He'll get his first league professional league goal in his career. And that will be the first of many. And hopefully, he'll come back to Mill next season or maybe in January and help us do something. Um, so moving on now to another Millwall player playing, but not for Millwall. And that's Dan Moss at Yeovil Town. So Yeovil Town won, Altrigan won. And Dan Moss played 90 minutes for for Yeovil at right back. Oh no, he didn't play. He played 86 minutes. Played 86 minutes. So again, that he uh, at the weekend he got subbed off around 80 uh, the 90th minute as well so that seems to be uh, a situation where that's they take him half for um for fresh legs or something I don't know what why the why the managers doing that um will be interesting to find out I don't know if it was a tactical substitution maybe bringing on a taller center back and then moving someone else the right wing into the right back or just trying to shore up maybe they move the right wing into the right back put a brung on at centre back and then move one of the forwards into the right wing maybe just trying to defend for their lives because they did go they were one nil up and then uh they were one nil up and uh Altrincham drew drew back later on um, and you can see here so that leaves so altering pretty good decent result because altering them in seventh and the overall now in 14th um, not too far above the relegation zone there in terms of points uh, eight points for Weymouth they've only got 11 so string of bad results could see them slip down and it's, well, it's still early doors but you could say there's only two relegation playoffs places left because Dover on minus nine that's a big big um, situation to overcome so there you go Dan Moss playing for Yeovil 86 minutes and Yeovil in 14th so there you go three Millwall players playing for teams not Millwall and one not playing because he's injured that's George Savile we'll wait to see what that means for us at Millwall um hopefully not too bad um hopefully uh moving on now to this story that was published today so I think it's also part of a um Matt Smith in the interview that was in the Suffolk News I think so this is about Matt Smith. So Mill striker and why he pays little notice to praise or criticism plus unjust feeling in squad. This is from news at den.co.uk. 
Matt Smith has had praise ringing in his ears recently, but has explained why he pays little attention to it. Nottingham Forest boss Steve Cooper admitted his side's plan to stop Smith failed after the striker scored in a 1-1 draw at City Ground late last month. And before the international break, Barnsley manager Marcus Schopp admitted Smith made the difference with his set-piece presence after coming on in the 77th minute before Murray Wallace headed the winner from Jed Wallace's corner with a minute left. But Smith prefers to keep level-headed level rather than put too much heed into any praise or criticism. I'm not one to read into any hype or anything like that, Smith told News at Den. I'm obviously not oblivious to what goes on. I've got a Twitter account that sometimes I'll look at. But in general terms, I'm not one to read too much. Because listen, it goes both ways. You're quick to be praised when it goes well and quick to be criticised when you're not doing well. So it's important to remain level-headed. If you get wrapped up too much in what's written about you, it just takes the focus away from the controllables, which is what you can do on a pitch, really. At the same time, any praise is always nice and can only give you confidence, which is a good thing. I think you can get 10 tweets telling you you're doing great and one telling you you're doing badly, and you'll probably look at the negative one. That's, that's human nature. But I think that comes with experience and age, being in the game for a period of time, you naturally develop a mental toughness and resilience to these things because Christ. If you were to really endure these things, you probably wouldn't get out of bed. It's important to stay grounded and level-headed, compose yourself and play with humility. The approach of remaining level-headed to not getting too up or down has served me all well this season. Before they faced Bristol City last Wednesday week, they were 19th in the table and boss Gary Rowan didn't shy away from the fact that his side faced two big games before the international break. Two 1-0 victories later after four consecutive draws and the table tells a very different story with the Lions 11th three points off six and on a seven game unbeaten run. Smith said that's what wins do. To go and beat him for a long period of time was a real positive but those results can look totally different. If you then put losses on the end of those draws, or wins on the end of those draws. Fortunately, it went the way it deserved to go because I think we've had a couple of unjust results uh, in and amongst those draws. Our league position now, while it's a lot healthier, is a lot more reflective of how we've performed in that time. The lads would say it was probably a bit unjust to only have points that points total going to the Bristol game. I don't want to put undue pressure on us by publicly making all these declarations, but my observation was that we had a really good group of lads that fell short by narrow margins, but we've only added quality to that narrow equation now. Hopefully that can be the ingredients to take us that one step further, but all those cliches about one game at a time and not getting too ahead of ourselves are relevant because if you start looking too far forward, you miss what's right in front of you. Uh, every game's important, so we've got to get this next batch of games Try to keep this unbeaten run going and hopefully that can keep us going in the right direction and take us that little bit further than in the last two seasons. Uh, Smith was out of contract at the start of the summer before signing a new deal in July. He watched with interest what the club did in the transfer market. He has two new attacking teammates this season. Benicophobia's a rival for Sinet's central striking position but can also play wide. And Shea Yojo has already assisted Smith supplying across at Forest with a centre forward to head home. Benick's a really good guy, I, I get on work very well with him, Smith said. He brings a real air of positivity wherever he goes. That's just his nature and, and it's infectious. That can only be good for the squad. On top of that positivity, he's a really, really good player. I thought against Bristol he was the best player on the pitch. His quality was there for all to see. He also brings a different skill set to what we've got. It's all well and good having players like that, uh, that like each other. But it's also nice to have different qualities and skills sets among the group. Benick has got that ability to get on the ball and turn in tight areas and make something happen in central positions and wide positions, which is maybe something that we didn't have. It's going to be uh, of much need and importance to the group. Ojo, a direct winger, wants to put balls in the box, which he showed in a game against Forrest and which I benefited from. It's He's someone who's well established in the league. My mates at Fulham said he was a brilliant addition to them. Likewise, a couple of powers at Cardiff said the same. It's obvious to see and he's been a great addition. He's at the ground running so hopefully he can continue to impact and con contribute to the side. Naturally you look to see how the club is going to prove the squad. The signings have been a real statement of intent from John and the board and from the manager to show we're trying to add quality to a squad that finished 8th and 11th. It's probably that next little bit of quality that can get, get us to that next stage. Hopefully that can be the case but from the outside looking in it was clear that the owner and manager had already looked to strengthen. 
and they absolutely have because the signings have come through the door have all been quality and will improve us here here so matt smith there a very uh decent interview well spoken um but yeah pretty decent there from matt smith so there you go that's it for the daily mill thank you for watching goodbye